What's going on everybody? It's Chris and Kate with Profoto and our Profoto Live. Today we are going to be talking about how to use a beauty dish. <clears throat> there are some things that I see people doing and not doing with a beauty dish that I think you could probably do more effectively or if you're just trying to get a good idea of <clears throat> how like techniques to use a beauty dish the way kind of they were designed to be used. That being said, you can obviously take rules and break them. That's kind of the point and some of the fun stuff of photography is to know the rules and then bend them or break them to your aesthetic. But there's some things that I don't think people think about when they're doing certain things with Beauty Dish that maybe they could change and be a little more efficient and get a similar look. And we're going to talk about what that is in a few minutes. But we're also going to kind of dive in. I'm going to put up a poll at the end of this Facebook Live. I'm going to, I'm going to have a separate... A uh, little post up that I'm going to do, and I've actually got because one of the things that people um, swear that they can they can absolutely swear about. I'll show you the photos too on the live before we actually do the poll. But people swear that they can tell the difference between a flat front light with a beauty dish and uh, a dome, and then like a pro head with the flash tube seated inside the dome. Whereas if you're using the dome on like a B1, which is what we're going to be using today. Uh, the, the flash tube is still recessed inside of it, but the dome is out. So I've taken three, Kate and I have taken three photos with a pro head, with a B1X dome, and a B1X with a flat front, all with a white beauty dish. And we chose white beauty dish just because it's one of the, it's the beauty dish that most people nav, uh, like navigate to. The silver is always going to look a little bit different because how pointed it is, but we went with the beauty dish that everyone seems to always kind of I thought something broke for a second, but actually, I think it was one of the casters of one of the wheels. Like, like I didn't lock it all the way, and I think it just unclipped. It freaked me out. I was like, that sounded like electrical, but it wasn't. I'm pretty sure it was a caster. Okay. Yeah, we're good. We're alive. So, but we, we went white beauty dish just because it's the one that most people tend to go towards. White beauty dishes are a little more safe. They're a little more flattering. Uh, they're not as pointed as a, a silver beauty dish is going to be. So once again, it's generally why people kind of tend that direction. Same, same thing with white umbrellas. Uh, people generally tend to like the smoothness of the white finish as opposed to the silver, which is incredibly beautiful. I love the silver very much. So I love the punch you get from silver. But we did that with the white beauty dish. So we're going to talk about finishes and all that kind of good stuff. So let's dive into it. Let's talk about what a beauty dish is and what makes it special. So a beauty dish is meant to be used at pretty close range. So I would say three feet ish uh, from your subject. And the nice thing about it is an indirect light source. So you have your light coming out of your flash. It hits this deflector panel and then it kind of shoots all over the place. So and that's with your flat front stuff. Obviously, if you have like a, a dome uh, sticking out of this thing, the light's also going to shoot out of the dome and hit the edge of the beauty dish and it's going to throw that light forward. It's a soft light. Uh, and it's an indirect light. Once again, it's indirect because it's hitting this panel. It's having to bounce around in order to get into the dish and get towards your subject. So really, really beautiful stuff. It's soft, but it's got a little bit of a, a punch to it, which is really neat. Uh, it's something very, very unique to a beauty dish. Um, someone actually brought up a, a good question a few weeks ago, and I think we're gonna do a Facebook Live on it where we do uh, umbrellas versus beauty dishes because they're both indirect and if you can get relatively similar results that way and we'll check that out at a later date um, but no it's an indirect light source really really beautiful on the harder reflector versions the ones that we call the soft light reflectors uh, they have a lip here so you can put like a 25 degree grid if you want to also something to note between the silver and the white beauty dishes is the beam angle is drastically different so if i'm not mistaken i have to look it up because i'm probably gonna i'm probably gonna get the number totally wrong but, and actually I think this grid's a 20 degree. No, I was right, it was 25 degree. It's a 25 degree grid, and I'm pretty sure the beam angle on this thing isn't much wider than 25 degrees as is. Uh, so it can just kind of take that light and focus it a little bit more. But pretty tight, it's around 25 to 30 degrees coming out of the silver, whereas on the white soft light reflector, you're talking something more like uh, 55 degrees. So you have a little more coverage. One of the things that people do wrong, I think a lot with the beauty dish, is they try to get it to cover the entire subject, and that's not what it's made for. So because the beauty dish is supposed to be operated at a closer range, in order to maintain that softness that a beauty dish is named for, the soft light reflector, 
you're just not gonna get full body coverage. And so what people do to try to get a little more coverage out of their beauty dish is they start to back it up really, really far. And this is kind of where I'm one of the, I hate to say it's a pet peeve, but it's just one of those things that I see people doing and there are better ways of getting a similar result without eating up the energy of your flash. And so what I see a lot of people doing is they actually back their beauty dish up, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 feet uh, just to try to get that beauty dish to wrap and, you know, get cover the rest of the body. And if you're looking for something soft and indirect to do that with and get some more coverage, use an umbrella. Like that's just going to do a better job of getting a larger light source where you can keep it relatively close to your subject, still keep it soft because obviously we all know the rule. Whatever you're talking soft light, the closer the light, the bigger the light source is in relationship to the subject, the softer it's going to be. So the size of the beauty dish never changes. So if it's closer to me, it's in relationship to me, it is larger, it's softer. But as you start to back it up to those longer distances, you're going to make the light source smaller. And not only are you making that light source smaller, it's an inefficient light source because you're hitting that deflector plate and it's having to bounce all over the place. You're just not going to get the efficiency you want. And then when you're out on location and you're using something like a B10 or a B10 Plus or a B1X, battery life is, oh, uh, <laughs> battery. It's called a beauty dish, not a booty dish. It is called a booty dish. Close. Yeah. yeah, it's a booty dish. It's for this, <laughs> for this, for this donk right here, right there, that donk. Um, but, um, I got the dump truck. I can't help it. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> um, but, but people back it up too far and, and because you're backing it up and once again, it's indirect, it's inefficient. You're chewing up a lot of power out of your battery seri battery powered flash. And you're just really, at the end of the day, you're going to bring down how many flashes you're going to get on that session. You're going to need more batteries and able to keep working. So this is where picking the right modifier for what it is you're trying to achieve is a big, big deal. And I'll, honestly, you could probably do a lot of the same, get a lot of the same look of a beauty dish further back with a magnum reflector, like an OCF magnum reflector. It's gonna be a little bit harder than the beauty dish is gonna be. And we could always test that while we're here and just see what that looks like because it's fun to test stuff. Uh, but with the magnum reflector, you're gonna stay efficient. You're actually gonna gain light as opposed to losing it by hitting that deflector plate. So all cool things to know. Um, like we, so before we start shooting, you guys can actually see this stuff. Uh, silver reflectors, silver beauty dishes, focus the light a little bit more. They just inherently do it because of the way they gobble up the light and push it forward. The white beauty dishes, much smoother, much more flattering. Um, not quite as punchy, but they still have a nice little snap to them. Uh, and then we have the OCF beauty dishes too. They're relatively similar. Um, they're a little bit larger in size compared to the soft light reflectors, about two inches bigger. Um, I have no idea what that translates to in metrics, so I apologize to all my metric users. Um, so yeah, and so I have a B, when, as we're doing the test, we're gonna kind of go through a whole bunch of stuff, and I'll show you some things too, but I have a B1X. I've got, right now I've got a flat front glass deflector on there. I've got a dome, so you can see what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the dome. It's this bad boy. So this attachment right here is made for the B1X, B1, D1, and D2, so Delta II. Uh, and it really just, once again, gets the light source from here inside the flash to out here. It's opaque, so it doesn't matter quite as much that the, the flash tube's not out here. It makes... You're making me so nervous holding it like that. Let me tell you. Don't do that! <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, but the, the flash tube makes a, a tiny little difference. Is it negligible? To most people, no. It just isn't. So, uh, and, and once again, I have some photos that I'm gonna show you guys here in a few minutes just so you can kind of see that stuff. But we're also gonna take some shots and you can see the differences between the finishes, which is kind of cool. And then I'm gonna show you a, uh, something that you want to pay attention to when using the OCF Beauty Dish. So let's do that. So I show them the photos first so so we can... Yeah, so let's, let me show you the photos first of the three. Um, they're just numbered. You have no idea what I shot them with, but I'm gonna show you these three photos. Uh, here, maybe, I don't, let me, oh, you know what, I can probably pull them all up together. Can I pull them all up together? Here we go. So here we go. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to thumb through these three photos really, really fast. Once again, I'm going to put these up in, um, on another post today, 
and we're going to put a poll up with it just so you can you can vote and see if you can figure out which one's the right one. I'm not going to tell you obviously what it is right now because that would spoil the po point of the post. But you can see between a, an exposed flash tube and a dome to just a dome to a flat front, can you really tell the difference? And so here's three different shots. I'm just going to thumb through them, all with the white beauty dish. Here's shot number three. Now, they're, they all have some tiny differences. Um, if you spot them, cool. Most people probably can't. And so this is just to kind of show you that sometimes people get really, really hung up in the minutia of certain things where it maybe doesn't matter as much as they think it does. So, but just kind of rolling through these. I know the differences because I, I pay deep, deep attention to these things. So cool. So those are the three photos. We're going to post those up a little bit later, but we're also going to take some photos so you can actually see the differences between these finishes and what we got going on. Oh, you know what? I'm going to say hey to everybody because I haven't said hey to everybody yet. What's up, party peeps? Uh, hey, everybody. Oh, it's spring up in the Northeast. I like it. It is going to be nice, like, finally. it's going to be like 83 today here in Ooh, like finally. Atlanta. So I'm kind of stoked on it. Uh, what's up, everybody? Hey, everybody. What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, so just got your, uh, Tavares just got his beauty dish in the mail today. Sweet. I'm just, I'm in your brain. I'm in your brain. It's weird. Uh, what's up, Minnesota in the house? Hey, everybody. We're trying to make sure. Let's see. Uh, when using a beauty dish, uh, does it accentuate my beauty or make me more beautiful? Um, I don't think you could be more beautiful. So maybe it just accentuates it. Uh, so you're gorgeous. Just bask in it. Uh, let's see. Does any replacement for in case I don't have the beauty dish? Does any? So you could probably get a lot of the same. I know we talked about this for a second. Uh, you probably get some of the same qualities with like a deep umbrella, something in the small range. Uh, we're going to do another comparison on that later, but there's that. Let's see. What's up, Spain in the house? Um, oh, see if I can get to the drum case oh yeah, yeah. Someone, yeah. So Caitlin's going to try to see if she can get to one of our, our road cases. Uh, there's some companies who make um, some cool cases. Uh, the ones that I have that I've actually flown with my metal beauty dishes are the SKB beauty dish cases. They're great. They're really, really great. And, and they've gone under the airplane. They get you know rattled around with the luggage, and I've never had one problem with any dents or dings or anything like that. We have a lot of stuff in like our supply area, so Caitlin's kind of digging around. Yeah. So cool. So let's get. Um, I'm gonna start setting up the camera and stuff. Let me move my laptop over here a little bit. Caitlin is having an avalanche of. Yeah. Caitlin's having an avalanche of stuff on her. Cool. Actually, and it's it's got my check bag tag on it, so you can see I actually do fly with it. So this case right here. This bad boy. So this is what I use for uh, the 22 inch beauty dishes. Uh, do I have anything in it right now? I don't think so. No, there's nothing in it right now. So it's kind of like a drum case, uh, but SKB, oh, yeah, sorry. SKB makes this specifically for, they call it their beauty dish case. Um, I put like one little piece of foam uh, between the beauty dish case and the uh, beauty dish itself just to kind of make sure it's not actually wiggling around in there but other than that it does great and once again there's my check bag tags for the times i fly with it so love my beauty dish love it love it love it um sick so what we've done is we have uh our light stand locked off we have kate's position locked off we got beauty dishes and we're going to shoot through them see how they look so i think what we're going to start with first is i think we're going to go uh flat front because some people have b10s and you you can't change that out in the first place so you just have to roll with your flat front that way so with the b1x i think for the first shots we're going to go flat front uh hard metal white and uh the ocf white and we can kind of compare those to and fro fun stuff and then from there we can just progress for whatever everybody wants to see so i'm going to kick this this way awesome sounds Great sounds. So one thing to note on the metal beauty dishes is they have a stopper plate built inside of them. So it's this little, uh, it might be kind of hard to see. Can you go a little bit tight, Caitlin? Oh, sure. That's good. Dope. So this little silver ring right here has a tiny little flange right here on the backside where, the, where you actually put the light into the socket. So it stops the light in a certain place. Uh, so don't try to like push it through to go further because it's just not going to. There's a metal stopper plate there. So that's just kind of where it's supposed to sit. Uh, the OCF Beauty Dish does not have that. It's built on the um, OCF Speed Ring. Uh, it doesn't have a stopper plate and it doesn't have a stopper plate for a good reason. And I'll, we'll expand on that here in just a second whenever we take 
and use the YOCFED dish. And so what we're going to do is just talk about, once again, comparing these units and look at coverage first and foremost, because once again, I was talking heavily about people trying to light the full body of a subject with their beauty dish. Uh, it doesn't really work that well. Uh, and I'll show you, I'll show you why. I think I'm going to stay with my wide lens too, so we can see all that stuff. And yeah, we'll just, we'll start breaking it down. So this is B1X for anyone who's wondering. B1X. Cool, let me move this case out of the way. You ready to rock and roll, Caitlin? Yeah. Sick. You can pull your camera up? Oh uh, yeah, you can pull the screen up. Oh yeah, I gotta pull up Capture One. Cap oh, I didn't even start Capture One. Hang on a second. I had to restart my computer right before we went live and so let me just let me make sure we're connected up. Sweet. Is anybody asking anything? It happens, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Check the case. The case is the case is sick. Um, you could also make like if you just kind of throw it around on shelves and stuff at your um, studio. Maybe you want to think about getting like some wall mounts. Uh, I don't think we sell them, but you can make them. Uh, don't talk to Zach Sutton about how he made his because his are really ugly, um, and he's also kind of mad at me about it. So I said the wrong. I said I think I said the wrong number, and he 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 went out of his way. Sorry, Zach. Diameter. Sorry, Zach. I said the wrong number. Sorry. 100 millimeters. It's 100 millimeters. So, so there we go. You ready for me? Yeah, ready to rock and roll. So once again, B1X, white beauty dish, soft light reflector, metal. like to keep it metal. And then, like I said, we're going to shoot this a little bit wider. Um, that way you can kind of see how the light falls on Caitlin. I think I'm actually going to shoot full body. So we can actually see this. Delightful. So good. Suck it. Suck it. All right, cool. So let's bring this back up a little bit because I just don't want to di distort it too much. Let's go like right cha. Cool. And I'm going to bring the beauty dish down a little bit. I'm going to try to keep it as low as possible. So, oh, I definitely got to be in the shot there. How much, how bad? Oh, I'm not in the shot that bad. Cool. Very, very cool. So let's go up just a skosh to get rid of that little tab. And once again, I just want to kind of keep the beauty dish as low as I can. And then you want to make sure the deflector plate is kind of right, hitting your subject right in the face. Is, can you see any light coming around, the, or the, the light around the edges of that? Are you good? You good? Not yet. Okay, cool. Not yet. Cool. Perfect. Here we go. TTL, oh, trigger on. Are we on with capture? I'm a hot mess apparently. Here we go. Cool. Three, two, one. So cool. White beauty dish, soft light reflector. Now let's try the OCF beauty dish. And we're gonna go comparison side by side. So you can tell the difference between the two. So one of the upsides for going with the metal beauty dish over the OCF beauty dish is the ability to add a grid to it. The OCF just doesn't have the option. You mind holding that for me? Yeah. The OCF Beauty Dish does, just doesn't have that option. Uh, it doesn't have the lip that this thing does, so there's just no grid for it. You could try using the two foot octagrid, but honestly, it's a 50 degree grid and the light's already being thrown close to 50 degrees as is. So one, you're not necessarily going to, to yeah, I'll set it up. You're not necessarily gonna get the, the, the control that you're wanting from a grid and then the uh, other thing is, what was I going to say? Oh, and it, it could it could produce lines on the edge of the thing, and I'll I'll show you that here in just a second. So I'm going to set this first shot with the OCF beauty dish up, kind of in the same position that the metal beauty dish would be, and then I'm going to show you a trick with the OCF beauty dish that a lot of people don't know to do. So make sure the deflector plate's there, and then I'm going to show you something to think about uh, on the actual shots themselves when I dive deeper into them. So are we ready to rock and roll, Caitlin? Yes. Cool. So back in your spot, here we go. Three, two, one. So that's white beauty dish. And then, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna push the beauty, I'm gonna zoom the beauty dish in tighter onto the flash. So it, the deflector plate and the actual flash head themselves are much closer. So let's do that. And I'll show you why I'm doing that here in just a second. Cool. And this should change a lot of the look. So here we go. Three. Two, one. I'm totally blank. 
Yeah, totally did. Here, let's get a non-blinker. Three, two, one. Cool. Sweet. So let's look at these two lights and then we'll move on to something else. Let me bring this. You know, I have like this. Yeah, I have this rolling cart that's supposed to make life easier, but then I start getting like tether cables and HDMI things all over chargers. And it uh it just goes to hell in a handbasket. Hi everybody. Um so let's go Uno Dose Trace. Let's go full screen on that bad boy. So here is your hard beauty dish white, OCF beauty dish white, and then the OCF beauty dish zoomed. I'm gonna show you why I zoomed it here in just a second. So one of the things that can happen with a beauty dish, and one of the reasons you wanna to try to stay clear of shooting too wide with it, is this right here. At some point, the light is gonna leak out from around that deflector plate. So it's gonna change the quality of light here to something way more direct and hard, and that hints why you can see this really sharp shadow right here on the ground, right? And then you can see this really sharp shadow, but then boom, deflector plate. You can actually see the deflector plate in the shot, and then everything goes soft, okay? So that's why you, that's one of the reasons you don't wanna to try to cover your whole subject in a beauty dish, because it just, the two types of light that you're gonna get are so drastically different, this is not gonna look that great. So you can augment that with another fill flash coming from the same direction as the beauty dish. Um, I have a cool trick that I do where I'll put a strip light on the light stand uh, right underneath the beauty dish. And then I'll use that strip light to light the full body if that's what I'm going for. But you wanna try to refrain once again from letting the beauty dish light the whole subject. Now, if you have a gigantic massive beauty dish, I know that there's some people out there who make like 40 inch beauty dishes, you might be able to get away with some more of that kind of stuff. But in the, in the world of like the standard like 22, 24 inch size beauty dish, are you gonna be able to light a whole person with it? I mean, yeah, she's lit, but it's just two totally different light qualities. And it's, you know, if that's what you want, sweet, uh, but it may, it's probably not. So looking between the OCF and the metal, there's really not a huge difference. The one thing that is different between the two is the deflector plates are a different size. So the OCF deflector plates a little bit smaller, Hence, you can see that in the shot. So you can see how big this deflector plate here is. So you obviously have the light leak kind of going out here towards the edges, towards the edges. That's just what, that's what that is. That's the light leak. So the difference between the OCF is once again, smaller deflector plate, more the light starts kind of escaping out, but it's still light quality wise. Apparently I uh, misfocused a little bit, but that's okay. Light quality wise, they're incredibly similar. So on the third shot, we took that beauty dish and we pushed it in closer to the flash head. We did that for a very specific reason, to cut down on that light leak. So it's still leaking. It just is because you can't, you don't want to jam it too close to the deflector plate because then it's just going to become so inefficient and so not what the beauty dish is that it's not going to look right. So I have it about halfway between the, um, the flash head itself and the, the deflector plate. And so the nice thing is, you can see the deflector plate in relationship to the light got bigger, so your coverage is bigger. It's actually bigger here than it is with the standard 22 inch soft light reflector. So you're getting some nicer coverage, still looks incredibly similar. So between the three, you know, you're rock and rolling. Like I said, the only downside to go on the OCF side is no grid. The upside though is it's 100% collapsible. So because it's based on the OCF speed ring setting, you can take it apart, set it up really, really easy, folds down to a bag. Uh, the, OC, the regular soft light reflector is not as easy to travel with. So these are all things you need to think about whenever you're shooting this kind of stuff. Are you more of a mobile photographer? Maybe the OCF beauty this is exactly what you need. Um, but once again, at the end of the day, we still got some light leak down here towards the bottom. Now the upside for the white beauty dishes, once again, is that they have a lot of coverage. So you can, you can do half body shots pretty easily. I mean, if, if, you know, even if we went three quarters here, you could get away with it. You still might need some, a reflector down here to augment a little bit, but you could get away with it. Once you move over to something like a silver, which we'll do here in just a second, I'll throw the silver on this bad boy and you'll be like, oh my gosh, that thing is so pointed. No wonder I can't cover somebody with it. So cool. Let me see if anybody has any questions. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, what do we have a gel question? Sorry, let's see, let's see, let's see. What happens when you use a color gel on a light with a white or silver beauty dish? Home, what were they saying? What happens when you use color gels on a light with a white or silver beauty dish? 
it just becomes that color. It's it's so it depends on where you place your gel. Um, I probably wouldn't use. Well, first you're not going to be able to use the OCF to set up with it. So you're going to want to either do one of two things. You're going to want to try to put the gel right on the, the flash head of the light going through the the speed ring because that's going to make sure that the, the light hits all of the gel. You want to make sure that you're covering the whole light with the gel. And that way, when the light shoots through the gel, it'll illuminate the whole beauty dish. Or you could take a really large sheet of gel and you could drape it over the beauty dish. It's easier to do the smaller one. Uh, you could just tape it up there and it'd be fine. I probably wouldn't go the OCF uh, 2 route, try to, to, try to use both of them with the beauty dish. You're never going to be able to do it with the metal one just because of that stopper plate. But once you start kind of doing that with the, uh, the OCF beauty dish, I think you're going to start pushing yourself in too close to the deflector plate. So the only thing that's going to change is the color. You're just going to want to make sure that you put the gel right on the flash head and make sure there's no light leaks or you get a really large gel and you put it over the whole dish. I would probably err on the side of putting it right on the flash head. Let's see. Uh, what's up, everybody? My, name, my man Ron's up in here. Also, what difference would you get in the color gelling a reflector plate versus the light itself? Uh, it's probably gonna. Ch it's probably not gonna be the exact color because. So I think the one misconception that people have about the flat front lights. You know what? Let me just not take that one down. Let me see another flat front light. One of the misconceptions people have about our flat flat, flat front lights, our flat front lights, is that the light only comes out in a certain direction and it doesn't. Um, so if I kick this bad boy on, if I take my hand out 180 degrees from side to side, there's tons of light coming out right there. You can see my hand is directly to the side of the flash and it's lit. So you're getting light to the edges. It's, there's still a reflector inside the fronts of these lights that throw light this way and this way. So we're getting coverage. Uh, once again, I think the big misconception about our flat front stuff is that light only goes straight out and it doesn't. So what would happen if you gelled the deflector plate versus gelling the flash head itself is some of that extra light that goes out and hits the sides of the beauty dish and doesn't hit the deflector plate, that's going to be white light. And the white light is just immensely more powerful than the gelled light's going to be. Honestly, you probably won't. If, if the color shifts, it'll be really minuscule. You're probably not going to see a huge difference. So uh, gel the flash, not the deflector plate. Cool. Is this a new time? What's up from Flagstaff? No, we do it at 1 o'clock. We we're like 10 minutes late today because we we're addressing uh, an audio issue. We want to make sure that you guys can actually hear us today. That generally the good, the best, generally the best idea. So sweet. So we went through, once again, I'll, I'll pull the screen back up just so you can see it really quick. We did the white beauty dish setup. Soft light reflector, boom, metal beauty dish, OCF white right here, OCF white zoomed in like about halfway. So it's actually the way it zoomed, if you look at it on the B1 itself, it's actually pushed almost all the way back to the, it, no, it is pushed all the way back to the, um, right where the umbrella port is. I don't really want to turn it just yeah. right now because I kind of have it set where it is. Um, but yeah, it's, it's there. So let's do white versus silver so you can see the difference. I am going to go to the dome. You know what? I'm going to show you the difference between silver, no dome, and domed. And this is where I think the dome starts making a really, really big deal. Um, so if you're a silver beauty dish user um, and you have the have a, a light that can use a dome like a B1 or a D1 or a D2, I would I would dome it. And you're about to see why here in just a second. It's a uh, it is a lot different. It's a lot different. So for the most part, for the most once again, for most people who are just using the um, white beauty dish. It's not gonna be that big of a deal. And honestly, the majority of people aren't gonna be able to tell the difference. Once again, this, the silver beauty dish, this is the, this is the end all be all of, you know, you know, get, get yourself a dome. So let's move, I'm gonna move this over here maybe so I don't have to go as far with it. Yeah, I don't wanna have to keep knocking it over. So let's turn that on. So are you ready to rock and roll, Kate? Cool. So one of the things, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this on the wide shot just because there's an LED modeling lamp here, but the easiest way to, to tell where to put a silver beauty dish is it makes, because it's such a focused light source, it makes a point. So, oh, cool. They're going to be able to actually see you there. So uh -huh. what I'm going to do, 
tight. Gotcha. What I'm going to do is loosen up the flash head, and there's a little point right there. It's on her neck. Look forward, and now it's right on that eyeball. See it kind of moving? Hopefully, you can see it moving over that eyeball. So that's where I want it, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn the light a little bit more to point it in the middle of her face. But that's how you point the silver beauty dish. It kind of, the nice thing is it gives you a, a little guide, which is kind of cool. So way more efficient. So we're at like a, a power level of 5.7 when we were using the white beauty dish setup. This is gonna drop probably by minimum a stop. My guess is closer to two. So here we go. And you're also gonna see the difference in coverage. Ready? Three, two, one. A lot of power. It dropped, oh, oh, it didn't drop at all. I'm incredibly surprised. It did look way, it, looks hotter, it does look hotter. Let's see, yeah, it's definitely hotter, way more pointed. You can, you can tell it's way more pointed of a light source. Okay, it might actually change with the dome. Let's try this, I'm gonna get one more just to, just to confirm that I didn't mess anything up. I'm in TTL mode, and it might just be because it's looking at a lot more of the scene. So it's trying to. I didn't hear your oh, sorry. I don't know what my face was. It's all good. Come back. Very Three, two, one, pop. Ooh, that one's way overexposed. So let's go back to that first one. Oh no, it's not. It's just the back of my camera looks overexposed. But this is pretty good. So you can see, the silver is way more pointed. I'm actually gonna. If you want to hang for just a second, Caitlin, um, I'm just gonna show them the silver versus the white. Let's go here. I believe. Yeah, so here's the silver versus the white. The silver's, the, the white has a very, very, very smooth look. Uh, I'm kind of all over the place. Be versus the silver, which is, it's got some extra punch to it. It's really, really great. The light just falls a little differently. But once again, you can see actually back here too, you have the deflector plate that you have from the white, but then because the light is gathered differently and you can see just in the exposure difference between this and this, or like the actual light quality difference, there's another extra little point of light that's gathered up right here. You can see it right in that deflector plate. It's hitting Kate, and it just adds that little bit of extra snap, which is really, really cool. So once again, really, really soft and smooth with the white. I could, honestly, I could probably bring up an exposure a little bit if I want to. Let's just see if, I, if we match uh, exposure on the face, what the difference is. So, there, if we did more of a closer exposure match on the face, you can tell the difference between the two. Um, you definitely are throwing light a lot wider with a white beauty dish than you are with the silver beauty dish. So now let's do that same silver beauty dish, but I'm gonna put a dome on the inside of it now and it should change quite a bit. So let's do that. So let me grab this dome. You wanna hold that for me? Very carefully. Yeah, I'm actually gonna take, I, I took the dome off earlier while the beauty dish was on. I was fine with it, but honestly, it's probably not the smartest idea. It's probably the easiest way to break glass. If anybody wants to learn how to uh, take these glass plates off as easy as this, holler at me. I can teach you a thing or two. Cool, let's see. The other problem is I keep looking into this modeling lamp while it's on. Yeah, it's not good. There we go, perfect. So we got the dome on it's gonna become a lot more pointed. Come on, there we go. And so now I can really unlock this bad boy. So I can really see that point even more. It's even more focused than it was before. So we go there, let's unlock this a little bit. So you can kind of see it moving around right there. So let's lock this into place. Lefty loosey, righty tidy. Cool. Swoop. So let me push this out of the way. And then we can see dome and no dome. Here we go. Three, two, one. Way more pointed. Way more pointed. You can see that it actually smoothed out the uh, it smoothed out the deflector plate quite a bit. And then you can see that extra bit of light that it just scoops up and just throws it forward. And also you can see down here how much the uh, light quality here changed uh, across the floor. 
So the way that the light's bouncing around, it starts to fill in some of this a little bit more. But once again, there's still the shadow on the ground from where it leaks out of the deflector. That's why you want to try to keep your shots, you know, cropped in a little bit. So, oh, come back here. Let's get the hand. So you want to try to crop a beauty dish shot, something like that, right? Because that way you have nice, even light, nice little three-quarter shot. Coverage is great. And that's, that's a, a beautiful shot with one reflector. Sweet, right? And then, once again, if you need to light this portion of your subject, you can just bring in a strip box. The, up, the upside for the reason I say bring in a strip box is because it's relatively the same as far as the um, quality of light goes. Because the strip box is, is soft one direction but harder in one direction, it's going to have a little bit of that kind of like edge to it that a beauty dish has that you can keep moving down the rest of your subject and then fill that stuff back in. Um, and then you could even cut down some more on this, like you could throw in a grid onto one of the metal beauty dishes and really cut this out and make sure it doesn't get, it, it's not affecting the picture at all. And then bring in that soft box from the bottom and do some cool stuff with that. So the differences between dome and no dome are drastically apparent I mean, they're not drastically apparent with the silver. Honestly, if you just have a flat front light and you can't put a dome on it, like the B10 or something like that, this is still beautiful. It just is. Like, it's just a different look to the light. Uh, but if you're shooting a D-series light or you're shooting one of the B1 series lights and you want to have a little more control over where you're putting that light, the dome is a great option for something like that. So, very, very, very cool stuff. So now... Let me see if you guys have any questions, and if not, I want to do one more comparison where we talk about backing up a beauty dish really, really far versus just using something like a magnet reflector. So let's do that. Let me see if you have any questions. Someone says sock or no sock beauty dish. What do you think? Beauty dish with sock or without? It's a totally up to you. So the, all the sock is going to do is smooth the light out a little bit more. Here, I'll show. I'll throw it on the silver just so you can see it. The silver is where you're going to see it more drastically anyway. So let's do that. Let's see. Sick. Cool. So the the sock diffuser for the hard reflectors isn't uh isn't fully opaque. It's it's a little see through, but it should even out a lot of stuff. So here we go. Ready to rock? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Let's do this. I'm gonna make sure that I have a focus point over you. Sweet three. Two, one. Cool. So the sock on the silver is just going to kind of quiet down the um, the hot spot. So you can see there. It also, once again, this is where I was talking about a grid. The, the actual sock did a pretty good job here. But this is where a grid would also kind of chop some of that stuff out. Is uh, This starts to become less apparent. And this is where you would want to use a soft box to fill in some more of the stuff. So... Really, really cool stuff. So, but the sock is just going to even things out a little bit more. What about grid? Uh, did you demonstrate with a grid? I did not demonstrate with a grid. I could definitely throw a grid on there really fast because I have one. Uh, one thing to know about using a beauty dish with a grid and a sock, put the sock on first, put the grid on top of it. Because, so if you, so if, say you have the beauty dish here grid and then you put the sock over it the sock is the thing that becomes the light source again so the light's just going to come through hit the sock and the sock's going to spread the light out some more so you want to make sure that you put the sock inside the grid so um yeah i'm not going to use the sock for this but that's just something to note if you're going to use them both together if you want to diffuse out the light but you also want the grid uh make sure you put the sock on first little life hack for you so 25 degree grid Let's see what makes this so awesome. Let's do it. You ready? Sick. Here we go. Three, two, uno. Way more focused. So that's what the 25 degree grid is going to do. So here you go. So you can see all three. So this is your... This is your silver beauty dish right here. Nothing on it. 
This is your Silver Beauty dish with a sock, and this is your Silver Beauty dish with a 25 degree grid on it. So it just, once again, takes that light, focuses it down a whole lot more. You still have a lot of the things that make that Silver Beauty dish that Silver Beauty dish, only now it's really pointing the light right where you want it, which is what grids do. So very, very cool. So the last thing I wanna do, let me make sure we don't have any other questions on that before I get to the last thing that I wanna do. Let's see. Oh, yep, I said F, get out of there. So make sure we don't have any other questions. Uh, thanks, Team Fane, no, thank you. Um, can you compare the OCF Silver with the Soft Light Silver? Sure, I can, th uh, yeah, I think I can throw it on there really fast. I, it's in my utility bin, I believe. Yeah, the utility, the, honestly, the utility closet right now is a bit of a mess. I learned how to organize the utility closet from my friend Peter Hurley, who, who taught me this method of just throwing stuff into the closet. And, uh, yeah, out of sight, out of mind. Honestly, I can't get to my two foot, I can't get to my two foot OCF beauty dish right now. Uh, I apologize profusely. I'll do it for you another day, I promise. Um, I just genuinely can't get to it. <laughs> um, so dope. Yeah, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take um, a Silver Beauty dish, I'm gonna back it up, and we're gonna, we're gonna fire off a shot with the Silver Beauty dish from distance, and I'm gonna show you why it doesn't look the same, because it just doesn't. And we're gonna stay B1 just so I can stay wireless. Let's take this bad boy off. Okay. So I'm not sure. I definitely don't need this light stand anymore. Oh, that's not gonna be good. Let's put this down. That's cool. Boom down. That was I was about to drop a boom arm into something else. Sweet. And then so let's go with this stand. This will be fine. Oh nice. Just breaking stuff all over the place. Cool. Sick. Let's do this. So I'm gonna put, so Kate, I'm gonna put Kate relatively close to the background. Probably, I'm gonna have you here on this, this spot right here. And I'm gonna put the flash probably, I'm gonna put it behind the SKBK. So it's probably 10, maybe 12 feet away. So I'm right here by the tight shot. So yeah, it's probably like 10 or 12 feet. It's probably 12 feet away. So, and then I'm gonna try to, I don't know if you can see, but we have lines. Yeah, we have some lines on the ground that we try to try to use as a reference. So, just gonna make a big pile of stuffs. Very cool. Good Very good at making piles of things and not being able to get back to those things. So, this isn't in the. Are we in the tight shot right now? Oh okay, yeah, cool. Okay, cool. There we go. Let's go up high with the beauty dish. Cool. Hope maybe you guys can see this. Maybe you can't, but it's it's up. Yeah. Is the silver? Can you see the light leaking around? Do I need to adjust the light up, Caitlin? It's fine. No, for you. Can you see the deflector plate? Can you see the light around it, or is it good? I need it to be shifted like this. Rotate. Yeah. There. Good. Okay. Cool. So I'm also gonna get this out of the boom microphone out of the way a little bit. I'm just gonna take it down. It's not on today. Yeah. Just hitting things with things. No big deal, guys. It's just video equipment. Yeah, it's just video equipment. Let's see. Dope. So let's just hang that there so it's not in the way. Sweet. So here we go. TTL shot of the Beauty Dish Silver, the efficient one, 12 feet away from the subject. So here we go. Three, two, one. So there's the Silver Beauty Dish. It's kind of small. Yeah. There's the silver beauty dish, 12 feet away from Kate. Could you pull it down yeah, yeah, let me get the chat bot out of the way. So power-wise, just so I can see and we know where we're at, we're at a power level of 7.2. I could go up another three stops if I needed to. So it's efficient enough that I'm getting light to Kate, but it doesn't really look like a beauty dish anymore. It's, it's, the shadows are much sharper. Obviously the edge here, let me see if I can zoom in just so you can see what I'm talking about. So the edges like here are drastically feathered and that's just because the beauty dish is a little bit bigger. 
so it, it has a little bit of feathering on the edge, but because it's backed up so far, in relationship to Caitlin, we're starting to get a much harder line here. So it's not really doing what a beauty dish does, right? So it just, they don't look the same. So I mean, if you compare a silver beauty dish at 12 feet versus a silver beauty dish here that was at, where were we at when we were originally? You were probably what, two, three feet away from it? Okay, so so three feet, the light just looks totally different. It's this is real kind of flat and muted, where this has a, like a really nice punch to it. So, the question is, is the beauty dish the right tool for that? Let's say we'll use the regular. So, if let's say we want to maintain some of that feathered look of the um, silver beauty dish, so we want to maintain some of that feathered. Uh, like the, this feathered edge here that we were getting from the beauty dish at distance, but we want to be more efficient. What you could do is you could go with the old school Magnum, right? So still larger than the OCF Magnum, the OCF Magnum. And granted, if you don't have access to this one and you have an OCF Magnum, the OCF Magnum will do a great job. It's just gonna be a little bit different because the size difference. So, but this is kind of where you start thinking about the right modifiers for the right job. So. We have the regular Magnum Reflector. Let's throw that up on the light. You need to go hang it back out over there, Caitlin. Sick. So beauty dish right there. Same spot? Yeah, same spot. I'm gonna zoom this into probably like six based off of the zoom scale on this thing. And that way, give me some coverage. I can already see, first and foremost, even with this LED modeling lamp on this, that I'm getting the light more efficiently to Kate, even with just the beauty dish, or even with just the, the LED modeling lamp. So we're already massively more efficient. And I can see the light of that beauty dish, or the, I keep saying beauty dish, I can see the light of the Magnum, and it has a little bit of that tapered edge that the beauty dish has. And once again, it's just from its size. Here we go, Kate. Three two, one, way different shot, but shadow wise, we're relatively the same. Hold on a second. Let's pull these up side by side. We see these are the most compelling pictures. This is literally just here so we can talk about the light quality and choosing the right modifier. So let me turn this modeling lamp off. Cool. So for the most part, you're talking relatively same shots. I would argue that the Magnum one's a little bit better, especially coverage wise, but we still have, like if we go down here and compare our shadows, we still have a little bit of that taper right here, a little bit of that feather. It's not quite as drastic of a feather as the Beauty Dish because it is a little bit bigger. But here's the kicker. We we're at like 7.2 on the Beauty Dish. We're at 5.3, two stops of light, two stops of light different just by choosing the right modifier and now we're going to get hundreds of more shots off of our battery than we would have gotten with the beauty dish and that could be a big deal like maybe you don't have as many batteries as someone else may have or maybe you're just rolling with the one battery that you have from your flash when you purchased it knowing how to maximize the output of that battery is a big deal so and and that's just kind of comes down to once again choosing the same the right modifier so Zoomed out, they look the same for the most part. Subtle differences, yes, but... Harder shadows. Definitely harder shadow, definitely less feathered, but light quality wise, it's not that drastically different. Let's check out like on the face, like under the nose. It's definitely a butterfly style light. Look at the, look at the light under the nose. I mean, I'm not, I, I didn't grab focus right away. My camera's acting a little funky, but look at the light under the nose. Look at under the chin. It's not that different, right? Mm -mm. Let's do this. I, I, I'm, it's, it, my, uh, when I made an adjustment earlier, the whole, my capture one's underexposing everything. So let me correct the exposure back to zero. Let's go to zero. And then same thing here. Let's go to zero because it's, it's like a half stop under on this thing. Zero. Pop. Cool. But this Magnum obviously has a, a touch more punch but for the most part, you're getting the same light. So it just comes down to choosing the right modifier. So you know now looking at your beauty dishes, what 
you're gonna get out of certain looks. So you know that a silver beauty dish is gonna be a little bit tighter, a little more pointed. A white beauty dish has a little more throw, it's a little smoother, it's a little more forgiving. And then if you need to take your beauty dish out into the field and you need some more coverage, you know maybe that's not the right modifier for that job. Hey, I'll throw my hands up in the air. If you are totally happy with what you're doing with your beauty dish at long range, then be happy with it. I'm just letting you know some of the pitfalls of doing that. And one of them is gonna be efficiency. And that efficiency is gonna to translate to how much battery life you're gonna get out of your stuff. So just, just so, food for thought. So I know I beat a dead horse with a lot of that stuff. So we're gonna, we're gonna be wrapping this bad boy up. I'm gonna see if you have any more questions before I roll out. Um, so let's see. Um, did you demonstrate with the grid already? I did. Oh, no, I didn't. You, you got me to do the grid, so cool. Um, I'm really super sorry I couldn't find my silver beauty dish. I really, I genuinely don't know where that bad boy is. It's, it's in my, it's in the abyss, it's in the abyss of, yeah. I have, everything's in bags, but all the bags are on top of each other. So it's a mess. I need to fix it. I've got a, I've got a whole, I just bought like a whole slew of organizational oh, things yeah. for like hanging my lights and, and putting everything where they need to be. So it's a slow process, but we're getting set up. Let's see. Um, Sorry, I'm just trying to see. Oh, oh, you guys are just having a conversation back and forth, and that's dope. Cool. Um, I'm here now. What's up, Stefan? Um, tell Provoto Corporate we want a 500 watt flash, the size of a soda can. K, thanks. Laugh out loud. Just kidding. Just kidding. Hey, man. We're trying to make all kinds of crazy stuff. We made a five. We we made a 500 watt flash, like the B1, but already smaller. Maybe we can figure out a way to make it even smaller. Who knows? Our guys are pretty smart. Um, Compare OCF Magnum to old school. Um, we'll do that at a different time. Uh, we'll do a whole Magnum showdown thing, just talking about that. Uh, I just wanted to th really breaking out the Magnum was just to talk about getting towards the end there, choosing the right modifier for what it is that you're trying to accomplish, and how I see sometimes people using beauty dishes at much further distances than really you should think about using a beauty dish. So, and that was just me saying, hey, you could use something like a Magnum reflector, get two stops of light back. Uh, and get similar results. So that's what we were doing there. So cool. Like I said, the last two shots weren't anything that was supposed to be super compelling. Just showing you that relative to one another, they're not that different when you start to introduce range to that. So cool. Uh, hopefully that was cool information for everybody. So anyone who's you know thinking about getting into the beauty dish game, or you you are you know you're gonna get a beauty dish, but you weren't sure if you're gonna go silver or white or OCF or old school soft light reflector. Hopefully this is giving you some food for thought in choosing something like that. If you have any other questions about any of the products we talked about, I put all the links up in the description. So you can go and check out the actual gear. You can read down through the tech specs. It'll tell you all your beam throws and stuff like that. Uh, and then, you know, if, if you know that you're going to want something like grids, like if you loved when we were talking about the silver beauty dish, if you love having something like that, where you get the look of the beauty dish, but you're able to tighten that up a whole bunch and you know, you want that grid. Sweet. Uh, the upside for the OCF stuff is you have a sock. There is a, dif a diffusion option for your OCF beauty dishes, so you can get that. That comes with your beauty dish. Um, but if you wanted to go the grid route, the old school soft light reflector is gonna be, I say old school, it's just because it was here before the, the OCF uh, beauty dish. But that's gonna be your grid option is going with the, the soft light reflector setup. So if you know you want something like that, now you know this is where I need to go. And then obviously there's some great companies who make some dynamite cases like SKB. Um, who, who make a really, really good travel case for the hard reflectors if you decide that that's the route that you would rather go. So, and that, that'll keep you from dinging it up and you can take a little bit better care of that bad boy like that. So, cool. I don't think I have any other questions. Did you see anything come through, Caitlin? Cool. Sweet. Thank you all so much. Cuba in the house. What's up? Uh, hopefully you guys have an awesome day. Great weekend. Are you going to put a poll up? I am going to put a poll up. I'm going to put the three photos up. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably give me like Give me like 15, 20 minutes to do it. Um, but I'm gonna put a poll up. I'm gonna put the three shots side by side. You can go look at them and you can just vote which one you think is which. So like, I'll probably just ask you which one is shot with the pro head because that's the thing that, that's the pinnacle of what everybody compares everything to because it's our flagship. So I'm just gonna ask you which one was shot with the pro head and then you can vote. And we'll see who gets it right and who gets it wrong. 
uh, because I think, once again, I think some people overestimate their ability to tell what's what. So, uh, but in the meantime, I hope you have an awesome rest of your week. I hope you have a dynamite weekend and we'll see you next week on Facebook Live talk about some more cool stuff. If you have any things that you wanna see, DM me, let me know what you wanna see. I, I build these lives around information that I think is useful to you and also around things that you ask for specifically. So let me know. In the meantime, have a good weekend. Peace out.